From the CISO series, it's cybersecurity headlines. It's Tuesday, July 11th, 2023. JumpCloud resets customer API keys. The access management company informed customers that it took the action in response to an ongoing incident. No word on any specifics, but JumpCloud said it came out of an abundance of caution. The company's website claims it provides technology to over 180,000 organizations. However, given the potential service disruptions resetting API keys could cause, it speaks to the seriousness of the incident. Would you be interested in a slightly used dark web market? Operators of accounts tied to the fraud platform Genesis Market began advertising about a sale of the platform in forum posts. These posts initially appeared on June 28th. On the one hand, Genesis provides genuine innovation in cybercrime, not just offering a platform to sell stolen data, but also offering a browser extension to impersonate victims, letting you weaponize it more easily. On the other hand, it's a tough sell, given that the FBI led an operation to seize its ClearWeb domains three months ago. It's also on the U.S. Treasury sanctions list. The U.K.'s National Crime Agency says Genesis Dark Web mirrors remain hosted in an inaccessible jurisdiction. U.S. and E.U. agree on a new data transfer agreement. The European Union announced it adopted a new transatlantic data adequacy agreement with the United States. E.U. Justice Commissioner Dieter Raidners said the agreement will allow for personal data flows between the two on the basis of a stable and trusted arrangement that protects individuals and provides legal certainty to companies. The prior two data sharing agreements had been struck down in court over concerns that European data could fall under U.S. surveillance powers. Since U.S. surveillance laws remain intact, the issue remains a major point of contention. Austrian activist Max Schrems filed successful lawsuits against the previous two data transfer frameworks. He remains critical of the new agreement, saying he expects the issue to be back before the Court of Justice for the European Union by the start of 2024. Code Interpreter Plugin comes to ChatGPT. OpenAI developed the plugin for its own internal use, and now it's making it available to all ChatGPT Plus subscribers. Essentially, this opens the door for the large language model chatbot to write and run code in Python, as well as the files you approve of with a limit of up to 100 megabytes. This allows ChatGPT to do things like generate charts, maps, data visualizations, graphics, and create interactive HTML pages, and more. It appears to be especially useful for data scientists dealing with complex data sets. The idea is that Code Interpreter would be great at democratizing and simplifying these types of tasks, usually done by data scientists. And now a word from our sponsor, Opal. Opal is the data-centric identity platform. Identity is one of the last great enterprise frontiers. It's fragmented with legacy architecture. Opal's mission is to empower enterprises to understand and calibrate access end-to-end. The best security teams from companies like Databricks, Figma, Blend, and Drata use Opal to build identity security for scale. That's O-P-A-L dot dev. Ransomware Group claims large breach at UK NHS. The Alf V ransomware organization added Bart's Health NHS Trust to its leak site. Bart's, the largest NHS trust, which serves over 2.5 million patients, confirmed it's investigating the incident. Exfiltrated data seen by TechCrunch claims to show employee documents like passports, as well as confidential internal emails. This marks the second major data breach involving NHS data. In June, an attack on the University of Manchester saw an NHS database with data on over 1 million patients accessed. Revolut flaw exploited for $20 million. The Financial Times' sources say threat actors exploited a flaw in the payment system for the fintech startup Revolut. This resulted in stealing over $20 million over the course of several months. The attack started from a disconnect between the company's European and U.S. payment systems, which would erroneously refund accounts when it declined specific transactions. The first incident seemed to have cropped up a few times in 2021 before becoming fully weaponized in 2022. This reportedly impacted Revolut's corporate funds rather than those from customers. Play Store spyware sends data to China. Researchers from the security firm Pradio discovered a pair of malicious apps in the Google Play Store. Both posed as file utilities with a combined 1.5 million installs. These apps launched without user interaction after installing, with researchers observing them sending data unprompted to several servers in China. Data sent included contact info, media, location, as well as network and device information. 
The researchers noted that despite the high number of installs, neither app showed reviews on the Play Store, indicating use of emulators to boost numbers. The researchers contacted Google to take down the apps before publishing findings. Enhanced Edge Copilot will have a long memory. Microsoft announced an enhanced Copilot experience for its Bing-powered sidebar in the Edge browser. This gives Edge users access to Microsoft's new chatbot, which is able to create output based on text queries, pretty typical generative AI stuff at this point. However, this new enhanced experience will add in a memory feature, allowing users to pick up prior interactions with the chatbot. This comes as many organizations ban the use of generative AI tools over fears of data leaks. One of the big reasons is that ChatGPT, the most popular of these types of chatbots, keeps all conversations by default. This means any leak of ChatGPT credentials risks exposing company information. Adding in this memory feature to a default Windows browser seems to further exacerbate privacy and security considerations with these tools. This week, we have a special CISO series podcast recorded live in Tel Aviv. The episode looks into the community uproar caused by a recent Forbes article listing America's 200 most cybersecure companies. Instead of giving kudos to successful organizations, the article highlighted a meager methodology and put otherwise unsuspecting security leaders with a giant target on their back. The episode discusses why this was a major faux pas and what Forbes can do to dig themselves out of the self-created mess. Look for Who's in Charge of Stopping Stupid Ideas in your podcast app of choice, or just head on over to CISOseries.com. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.